for the Anchor Protocol to reduce its earn rates, staking of galactic punks, a brand new dex aggregator for Terra, and a whole bunch more. This is the Lunar Orbit Podcast. My name is Jerry, and today is Friday, the 25th of March of 2022. So smash that like button and let's get into it. Okay, team, so much to get through in this pod. So we're going to dive straight into the Anchor Protocol. The, uh, the Prop 20 has passed, and uh, basically that's going to change the earn rate for Anchor. So that's been a topic of much discussion over the last few months. And this is going to help make it more sustainable over time, which is what a lot of people have been howling at. So the idea is that it's going to dynamically shift the rate that you can get the earn rate. So currently it's at 19.5%. And everybody's been saying that that's not sustainable. The uh, Lunar Foundation Guard slash Terraform Labs have been propping it up by pumping money into the yield reserves. And uh, that's obviously not sustainable in the long term. So in the meantime, they put this new mechanism in place to slowly reduce the rate. So basically they're going to drop it by up to 1.5%. Or increase it by 1.5% depending on how the actual yield reserves are tracking and they'll do that gradually over a month and at the end of each month they'll reassess it and adjust it appropriately so it's going to be gradual so basically it means that you know we're going to be at 18% pretty well within a month's time from when this first gets implemented and in all likelihood we might probably drop down another 1.5% from there before we start to see where things start to settle down. By then, hopefully, we'll have a lot more collateral assets actually available on Anchor. So that should certainly help. And, you know, two months is a long time in crypto, so I I guess we'll just see how it's tracking by then. But this is a a positive thing. It's going to make it more sustainable, but it's also going to mean less mercenary. People will either start to look elsewhere if the yields don't maintain an appropriate level for what they want to do. If they can get better yields elsewhere, they will. But this is all part of the the market forces that uh, keeps it in place. So I think if Anchor did start to lose market share, Terraform Labs would do things to try and keep it uh, sort of in in the top spot because the whole idea is that this is a bit like um, the Amazon model. They're trying to win as much market share as possible, not actually trying to make a profit that's actually costing them money at the moment. And that's what Jeff Bezos did for years. And look at Amazon now, they, they, they're massive. They're, they're such a big uh, big company um, and it's mostly because they killed off all the competition. So it's a similar model that they've gone for here with Anchor and it's quite ingenious the way that they've done it to help bootstrap the economy and that's why Luna's become so strong in such a short space of time. The other thing that's worth mentioning with Anchor is SAVAX is now a collateral. So we've got the three collateral types. We've got B Luna. ETH and now SAVAX so they're all the staked derivatives um, the the staked tokens so they all earn proof of stake rewards and you can now deposit in them into Anchor and uh, borrow against them and start earning that juicy yield which is what a lot of people do but also a a lot of people are not depositing assets they're simply just getting UST and putting it into the earn side and that's why the yield reserves get so rapidly depleted so the more people we have on the borrow side the better. So the more assets people can borrow against, the more we should start to see the uh, the borrow side beef up. And that's that's really important for the protocol to be sustainable in the long term. All right, so moving right along, we've got a new DEX aggregator on Terra. Now these guys are sort of spun up out of nowhere. I hadn't really heard of them at all, but they dropped this uh, medium post on the 23rd of March and it goes into what they're all about. So I've sort of mentioned in the past that Coin Hall might become a bit of a DEX aggregator. It feels like over time they're going to sort of try and cement themselves into that position. But uh, but these these new players have, have arrived, Terraformer, and uh, it looks pretty good. So I haven't actually used it myself, but the, the big thing with a DEX aggregator is if you're familiar with One Inch, that's a, a popular one, uh, Slingshot Finance, there's a few others. There's a really good way to get the best prices on assets because it basically is aggregating all of those different liquidity pools and finding you the best prices with the lowest amount of slippage. But what is really interesting with Terraforma here is they actually allow you to to trade between assets that there aren't existing pairs for. So what I mean by that is you could buy uh, X Prism, the governance token, the staked governance token of Prism with Anchor tokens. Now, there is no Anchor X Prism pool anywhere, 
but these guys will actually allow you to do that because they'll probably route through Luna in the back end or UST or, or whatever it is and basically match up two different order books to let you do that trade in you know in one click. So that's brilliant. You don't want to you'd want to check out you know if it's profitable to do that versus actually doing a few manual trades yourself to make sure that it's well worth your value. I'm sure these guys collect the fee in the middle at some point and there might be more slippage, who knows? But uh definitely want to keep an eye on and it's just it's just great to see extra things coming into our ecosystem. So give uh give Terraformer a look. I believe their web address is tfm.com. So check it out. Uh, they've got a bit of a launch pad and some uh, yield farming opportunities on tokens on other chains because these guys do cross-chain stuff apparently. So give them a look. It's good to see something else new uh, basically come out of nowhere. So yeah, really interesting. Before I continue, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Hi, I'm Jerry, host of the Lunar Orbit podcast, where I provide regular alpha and updates on all things Terra Luna. And if you enjoy this content, consider supporting the channel by smashing that like button, hitting subscribe, and hitting the notifications bell so you get all my videos in a timely fashion. All right, guys, so next up, I wanted to talk about the Galactic Punks. Now, I've spoken about them before in previous pods, and they're an NFT project, and a lot of people's eyes glaze over when they see these uh, 10,000 PFP profile pick NFTs. They just think, what's the point? And largely, I share that sentiment with a lot of them. If, they, if they're literally just that, if they're just a JPEG, I sort of wonder what the point of them is. But Galactic Punks have done a great job of actually building an ecosystem around it and actual use cases. So one thing that's really interesting with Galactic Punks is they are... Uh, so one thing that's really interesting with Galactic Punks is what I went through in a previous video here. So we'll just give this a quick play and it shows you some of the value proposition of of having a punk and of staking a punk. They created or they reached a agreement with Prism, a partnership, and um, the Galactics Punks DAO is going to be purchasing, purchasing $60,000 worth of the Prism token in phase one. And because of that, part of the partnership means that uh, that their, their validator set will basically be shortlisted to be part of the delegation for Prism. So Prism's going to get the Lunar tokens and in the background, when they stake them, they're gonna stake some to the Galactic down. Looks like they're gonna earn potentially up to half a million dollars a year in revenue. So that's pretty good investment by the Galactic Punks DAO, $60,000 upfront, $60, upfront investment and they're looking at getting $500,000 a year in on, ongoing cash flow returns through their validator. So that's a, that's a good partnership. So with their partnership with the Prism Protocol, they have actually mentioned that down the track, you may actually be able to use your Galactic Punk NFT as collateral to refract in Prism because essentially a staked Punk is going to be a source of revenue. It's going to be a yield generating asset as it picks up the yield off of uh, all these things that the Galactic Punks are doing in the background, especially like running their own validators. So essentially it's a tokenized share in a validator set on the Terra blockchain. So that's super fascinating. I, I really like that they're building fundamental value in underpinning this. They've already uh, done some other NFT drops like the Galactic Grids, which I've mentioned previously. So that's super cool. And now you can start to stake your punks. So if we see here on the Galactic Punks page, uh, you can stake your punk. And I believe more than 50%, yeah, here we go, 5,608 punks out of 10,921 have already been staked. So that's going to take them off the market. Laws of supply and demand, there's less punks available for sale. So in theory, that should help get a bit of a floor price in there. And if more and more get staked and start earning yield, there's just less and less on the market to buy. You've got to actually look at this as a fractional ownership of a little company here. You know, a validator set on Terra, a key stakeholder in Prism. They bought $60,000 worth of Prism token. They've no doubt been staking those and earning, you know, 40 to 50% yield on those tokens. So... I think they're doing really good stuff, the Galactic Punks DAO, and uh, it's just uh, really wanted to get that on people's radar because if you're not in the NFT space, you could easily miss this. This is basically a DeFi token now. So get that one on your radar, guys. It might be worth having a look at getting one if you haven't, or it's certainly worth staking them if you do. Okay, guys, so addressing the elephant in the room, a uh, big bit of news has dropped. So the first details on the Bitcoin reserve pool have gone live. Jump Crypto here with uh, Kenev, who's on the Lunar Foundation Guard, is a part of Jump Crypto, 
they've put a proposal in on what to do with the Bitcoin reserves that Doe and the team have been raising. So this is how it works, but I won't go into great detail here because I did a video on this just yesterday. A lot of people are not understanding how this works, so I felt compelled to make this vid here. The Bitcoiners are wrong. They're plain wrong. UST is not backed by Bitcoin and it never will be. And in this video, I'll explain why and what it means for Luna Holders. So I'll link this in the description at the end. It goes into it in pretty good detail, hopefully in an easy way to understand because a lot of people are just not fully understanding how this all works. And they're saying, they're using terms like, you know, Bitcoin is now backing UST, which is just not correct. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and maybe consider watching one of my other videos.